By the end of this video we're going to add dashing to our game, where our player speeds up and becomes invulnerable so that we can dash through our enemies instead of getting hit like this. Ah, very cool, let's check it out! So we're going to want our player to dash when we press a button. In this project we're using Unity's input system, so if we go to our input action asset and double click on this, in actions we can click the plus and add a new action which we'll call dash. Click on no binding, then on path, I'm going to click listen and I'm going to press Q, which could be our dash button. Then on dash I'm going to click the plus again and click add binding, so we can add another option for dashing on path and click listen I'm gonna do right mouse button so you can right click to dash as well you can use whatever you like here whatever you want it to be just set it up in these bindings then click save asset we'll close this off and we'll go to our player and currently all our player movement is inside our player movement script you can get the first version of this player movement script which works with our unity input system for free on my patreon so I'll link that in the description if you haven't got it otherwise we'll double click on this and we'll add dashing to this script so underneath movement at the top I'm gonna to add a new header and call it dashing. Then we'll add in the variables we need. We're going to want a public float called dash speed and set this to a default of 20. A public float for dash duration. I'm going to set this to a default of 0.1 and then another public float called dash cooldown and I'll set this to a default of 0.1 as well. Then we'll add our private variables so we'll say ball is dashing and ball can dash. And we'll set this to a default of true. If you don't set a default for a ball it'll default to false. And then for later for our dashing to look cool I'm going to add a trail renderer and just name this trail renderer. So we're gonna have a little dashy line appear behind us when we dash. Cool, so that's all our variables. If we scroll down, just under move, I'm actually gonna copy move and paste it here and then replace the word move with dash just because we wanna use this same callback context. And then instead of this horizontal movement, we wanna say if context dot performed, which means we've pressed our dash button all the way down and we can dash. So our dash isn't on cooldown. Then we're going to start a coroutine and in here we're going to pass in our dash coroutine which we're about to write. So below this let's go private i enumerator. This will come up with a red underline so if you click show potential fixes and use system collections and then we'll call this dash coroutine. Cool so when we start dashing we want to set can dash to equal false because we're currently dashing and of course is dashing to equal true. We'll use this is dashing now so you know what it's doing and why we have two balls here. So can dash is used for if we can call dash again and is dashing is going to be used up into our update and say if is dashing we want to return. This is so that as we're dashing we can't change direction but we do want our animations to work. So I'm just going to cut these animators down here where we're setting our parameters and paste it just above is dashing. So our animations will be set but while dashing we'll not be able to do any other inputs. Call cool, back to our dash coroutine for our fancy trail emitting. I'm going to go trail render dot emitting equals true. Now we haven't seen what this does yet but this is basically going to turn our trail renderer on and we're going to set this up later. If you don't want a little line popping out of your character, you can just leave this bit out. Then we need to figure out our dash direction. So I'm going to go float dash direction and it's going to equal our is facing right boolean that we've been using when flipping our character and wall jumping. Then we'll go question mark 1f colon minus 1f. Well, basically what this is saying is if we are facing right we'll set our dash direction to 1 else if not we'll set it to minus 1. And we'll use this below with our rb dot velocity and set this to equal a new vector 2 and in here we'll pass our dash direction we'll times this by our dash speed so that's our x velocity then we'll set our y velocity be rb y velocity y so we won't change it. So this is our dash movement. Now we want this dash to last for a specific amount of time so we're going to go yield return new wait for seconds we're going to pass in our dash duration so once this ends we'll return to our normal speed to do this we'll go rb dot velocity equals new vector 2 we'll pass in 0f then rb dot velocity dot y cool so that resets our horizontal velocity so now we'll set is dashing to be false and our trail render is emitting to also be false. We'll group these together above so it looks nice and tidy. Cool, now we want to reset our cooldown for our can dash so we can dash again after a set amount of time. So we're going to go yield return new wait for seconds and pass in our dash cooldown. And when this is finished we'll set can dash to true. Cool, and before I forget for our trail renderer to work we need to grab the component off of our player. So up the top let's add a start function and we'll just go trail renderer equals get component trail renderer. Cool and that should be it so far for adding some basic dashing to our player. So let's go back to unity. Now if we select on our player and open up player input then open up events then open up player we'll scroll down and we can see we've got this dash event here. If we click the plus then drag player into this object slot on this no function drop down 
we'll go to player movement and then dash. So now our dash is set up, we can now add our trail renderer. So let's close our player input, go add component, trail renderer. And there's lots of different options you can play with in here, but I'm just gonna show you the way I set it up for my dash. So my width, I want it to be 0 0.3. My time, I make it 0 0.1. I turn emitting off by default in this little tick box. And then if you select color and then select the top right of these little tags, I turn the alpha down to zero. So it's kind of like a faded away tail. And then last thing to do is under materials, we'll open this up, click on none material and we'll select sprites default. Cool, so now if we press play, I can now dash to the side. Because my cooldown is quite low, I can dash quite frequently but you can add a higher dash duration if you like. So in a lot of games, you can dash through enemies and go invulnerable. And that's the kind of thing I want to add to our game. Otherwise, I just keep running into our enemies and getting hurt. So our player gets hit when colliding with our enemies. One way of making our player invulnerable to enemies is using Unity's Physics 2D Ignore Layer Collision, where we pass in the IDs of the layers that we want to be ignored. So in Unity, on our player, I'm going to add a layer and make this the player layer. Then I'm going to add another layer and name this one enemy. Now on our player, I'm going to go to layer, select player, then in our prefabs, I'm going to select our enemy then go to layer and select enemy. If I go to edit and project settings and to the physics 2D tab, you can see I've got this matrix of different tick boxes saying which layers collide with which. What we're going to do in code is basically untick this enemy to player one whenever we dash and then tick it back on when we're done. So let's do that. Back in the code, at the very top, when we begin dashing, I'm going to go physics 2D dot ignore layer collision and we can pass in the numbers that we used for our layers. So for me, it was number seven for our player and number eight for our enemy. I'll show you again in a moment. And then in our fur parameter, we want it to be a boolean of whether we want to ignore this layer or not. So yes, true. Then at the bottom, when we're no longer dashing, but before our dash cooldown yield, we're going to do the same thing, but say false. We do not want to ignore this layer. And that's all you need. If we now go back to Unity. You can check quickly which layer you need. If you click on any layer drop down, you can see seven is player, eight is enemy for me. This may be different for you. So just double check. But if we press play, now when I stand next to an enemy and dash, I don't get hit. Oh, I did because I finished dashing. <laughs> so my dash is quite short. You can change your dash duration on your player under your player movement script. Set it to something a bit longer, like 0 0.5. But you see our character now goes flying across the screen and is invulnerable. So that's obviously a bit much. <laughs> you can find the balance for your game, depending on what kind of thing you're doing. But yeah, that's dashing. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at jumping down for our platforms. Same way as we can jump through them now from below. We're going to be able to drop down from above, which is very cool. Our platform is slowly feeling complete. Gets even more fun from here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.